Welcome to today's Global Connections program. I'm Bill Miller. We're going to take a look today at how the United Nations is involving young people from uh, the United States and many other countries around the world to help them focus upon combating poverty, illiteracy, climate change, and many other problems that we're confronting. My guest today is an expert on being a youth observer. My guest today is Manira Khalif. Manira Khalif is the 2017-2018 U.S. Youth Observer to the United Nations. She's a first-generation Somali-American who was born and raised in Minneapolis, Minnesota, USA, and is currently an undergraduate student at Harvard University, majoring in economics and minoring in governor government. Manira, welcome to today's Global Connections program. Thank you so much for having me, Bill. I appreciate you being with me. We're going to get into your being a youth observer at the United Nations, but mm -hmm. you, well, let's get into it right now. <laughs> Why wait? Let's just <laughs> Why jump wait? right exactly. into it. Let's jump right in. It's exactly. right. Carpe diem. <laughs> Seize the moment. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, what is the youth observer? Yeah, so the U.S. Youth Observer is a role that was, you know, created by the U.S. Department of State and the United Nations Association to give young Americans a voice um, at the United Nations. So it's really about being a representative for mm -hmm. young Americans at the U.N. Um, and at various global policy discussions and events. Mm -hmm. Now, who sponsors you? Is this a U.S. State Department uh, exactly. It's a, operation? It's, exactly. It's, um, yeah, the program is through the, the U.S. Department of State. Um, and in terms of the day-to-day -day operations, that's kind of run by the United Nations Association. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you're involved with the United Nations Association of the United States of America. And, and uh -huh. um, full disclosure, I've been involved with UNAUSA for, <laughs> for the last 35 years. Yes. So, uh -huh. but to just put that on the table. But mm -hmm. tell, tell us, uh, tell our viewers a little bit about UNAUSA. Yeah. So UNAUSA um, was started way back in, I believe, 1946, and they've existed for, for quite a while. And with the mission of really kind of bridging mm -hmm. the gap between the United Nations and and the American public, um, and really promoting the work of the United Nations to Americans and making the institution more accessible. And so. So whether it's you know uh, refugee issues uh, to economic empowerment, they've created various campaigns um, to really equip um, Americans with the information and, and access that they need to create real change. Mm -hmm. And that's very important what you were talking about because uh, the vast majority of Americans, mm -hmm. we do not understand the United Nations. The mm -hmm. UN touches our lives every day mm -hmm. in many positive ways, but we don't understand it. And UNA USA is one of the largest nonpartisan 501c3 mm -hmm. international education groups yeah. helping Americans better understand the UN. It's not a cheering mm -hmm. team for the UN. Mm -hmm. It's not part of the United Nations, but it's there to try to help educate mm -hmm. the public about the UN. And our viewers can go to the website at www.unausa.org. Mm -hmm. Now, before we get off UNA, they also have uh, gen, Gen UN, gen yeah. UN chapters exactly. at universities and other mm -hmm. places like that. Yes. How, how, does, how do they operate? Yeah, so I mean, the beautiful thing that that, um, is that to be a UNA USA uh, member when you're a young person is actually free. And genuine chapters were re really a grassroots movement of young Americans who were saying, we want to get involved with the work of the United Nations um, and not wait until we're professionals um, as young people on college campuses. And so there are genuine chapters you know, all across the country at various uh, universities. Um, so it's really just young people who, who are excited and passionate about the work of the United Nations and want to get involved from the very get-go. Mm -hmm. And so you mentioned they can join free of charge, become a member of UNAUSA. Just exactly. go to unausa.org slash backslash join, I guess, or something <laughs> like that. Exactly. And that'll take care uh, of that. Well, yeah. what, it was quite an honor. Congratulations on being selected Thank as you. the U.S. Youth Observer at the UN. And of mm -hmm. course, other countries, they may not have that same type of program, but they're involving their mm -hmm. young people in many mm -hmm. ways at the United Nations, are they yeah. not? Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. And just, you know, with, with third committee um, happening, uh, we've seen That's a lot of- the social issues? Social issues, okay. exactly. Focus specifically on social issues. And a lot of young, uh, you know, young people have come um, as youth representatives, specifically a lot of them uh, with the title of being youth delegates, uh, to come represent their country and uh, specifically young people from their country at the, the United Nations. And so I was able to meet uh, youth representatives from Italy to Luxembourg. Um, and, and really, you know, what was really exciting about it was the fact that these young people were not waiting to, to lead, mm -hmm. that they were able to, to, uh, to become real leaders. Um, now. Um, so I thought that was really impressive. It, it certainly is. Very impressive. Now, you were here at the United Nations General Assembly, which is always an exciting time to be at the UN. That was in September, about the third week in September. Exactly. And through, well, 
well into October. Mm -hmm. But uh, what what were your goals when you came in, and what were some of your experiences? Yeah, I think my my biggest goal. You know, we've talked a lot about you know that in terms of the United Nations, it can be a really daunting institution to a lot of young people in the sense that they don't understand exactly what the UN does, right? And they don't feel like there's a, that access. Um, and so a really big part of my role is really about giving that behind the scenes look of the United Nations. And so that was a really big goal of mine, um, walking into the UN General Assembly. And so whether I was you know, uh, at the Social Good Summit um, and looking mm -hmm. at how technology can be harnessed for social good to um, a financing, financing the Future event at the UN headquarters, looking at how do we increase um, funding for education, it was really about showing young people here, here, the, here are the various issues that are being discussed um, and here's what's important um, and then and relaying that information through social media and blogging. And mm -hmm. Now you had a very unique perspective at the UN. Mm -hmm. Did you have certain preconceived notions when you came in thinking these, these things may happen mm -hmm. and other things actually happened? Did, mm -hmm. uh, did, did your opinions and your facts change as you went along through your, through this yeah. process? Yeah, I think to me kind of uh, what I was able to get a better understanding of was the fact that it really takes a global village, right? There's these, you know, these sustainable development goals, right? There's 17 of them, um, you know, touching on a variety of issues. It can seem kind of daunting, right? Where do I start, right? But the, but the, the fact of the matter and what really being at the UN General Assembly High Level Week demonstrated to me was that we need a variety of skill sets, right? So I went to events that touched on you know, the importance of data scientists providing accurate data to solve the issues regarding poverty, uh, to you know, public figures like activists um, and you know, celebrities who were leveraging their platform to spotlight climate change, for example. And so to me, I, I gained a better understanding of, of how we really need a variety of actors to come together. We don't just need you know, global leaders in the traditional sense, but really everyday people as well to take action on these global issues. We certainly do, and people so often say that the youth of today are the leaders of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They really should be the leaders of today, should they not? And tomorrow? For sure, for sure. No, 100%. And you know, we we had uh, International Youth Day back in August, um, mm -hmm. and the focus was on peace and security. Um, and there was a resolution 2250 that specifically. Um, it was, you know, it was historic, right? And it was almost like a landmark moment where for the first time there was a recognition of young people as positive agents for change, right? And, and the fact of the matter is that, for example, with um, peace, we need young people getting involved now, right, in these uh, peace processes, right, in order to make them sustainable. That's, that's the, the important part is if you want any kind of issue, right, any sort of solution uh, to an issue to become sustainable, you need to get young people involved from the very beginning. How did you, as you were going through this process, and mm -hmm. really a very unique experience, yeah. as we mentioned, how did you share this information? Did you run a blog? Did you Twitter? Yes. How, how did you get that yeah. information out? And how many folks do you think you reached? Any idea? It's hard to say when you <laughs> yeah, get into, yeah. that, into exactly. that realm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't have exact numbers, yeah. but um, you know, we've been really growing uh, the, the various social media platforms. So there's, there's a Youth Observer account on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, hopefully maybe expanding to some other social media platforms. But also I run a blog uh, for the Youth Observer position. And so it's really about giving y young people an insight into the, what's happening at the United Nations and what are the most important issues that are being discussed mm -hmm. um, at this uh, international forum. Mm -hmm. Now, are you involving any of these young people who are, say, mm -hmm. some who may be Gen UN members, mm -hmm. UNA members, or maybe not, yeah. but are you involving them into learning more about the United Nations or to get involved, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, to combat climate change or mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. uh, el eliminate poverty or mm -hmm. to empower women yeah. and to actually get them to be mm. hands-on and yeah. be actively oriented, yeah. actively engaged mm. in trying to promote programs mm. to accomplish those goals. Yeah, no, and, and I think that's 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 the beautiful part of UNA uh, USA is is the fact that they they give tangible ideas of what can be done, right? So um, a lot of young people. Um, you know, went to Capitol Hill and they lobbied their uh, the representatives to support the, the United Nations, mm -hmm. right? And so that's one way, for example, that that young people are actually be you know able to be hands on and 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 to put their passion into play. Um, and so 
I, that's one way of doing it. But I think another another important part is really about having those discussions. So I remember going to um, to a college campus and talking with um, a Gen UN chapter uh, specifically about the issues that they were that they were um, interested in or even their concerns, right? And so being able to also relay that information back to when I'm at you know at a UN event is really important. It kind of goes both ways. It's really about bringing uh, the UN to young people and young people to the United Nations. So. Exactly. Now, as you came into this position, as you've gone through it, and wh you were selected when back in June or July of uh, 2017. Of, yeah, end of July. Exactly. End of July, mm -hmm. and so you'll be there until June 30th of 2018, I guess. Is that around correct? that time exactly? Long, more or less. Yeah. More or less. Mm -hmm. But what what were your major challenges when mm -hmm. you came into this? Was it boning up on the United Nations, which mm -hmm. is a, it's, mm -hmm. it's not a huge organization per mm -hmm. se, but mm -hmm. it does cover the world. Mm -hmm. And it covers everything from A to Z. It's a yeah. very complex organization. Exactly. But what were some of your major challenges as yeah. you mm. came into this position? Yeah, I think there's a really, you know, you know, what you mentioned before, uh, an assumption made about kind of the capacity of young people, um, again, of, of being the leaders of tomorrow. Um, but I really believe that young people need to be leading today to ensure the goodwill of tomorrow. And so a, a big part of it is, you know, when you walk into the room, sometimes you're literally the youngest person in that room. Um, but yet you also have to contribute uh, your part. And so I think you know, it's easy to get caught up in that um, and kind of maybe even doubt your own abilities. Uh, but I think what, what reaffirms uh, the importance of, of not only this role, but also of my own personal voice is, you know, about the various issues that, I'm, that I want to see more movement being made on, whether it's, you know, education or women and girls um, empowerment. Um, and so that gives me the courage to be able to, to speak up um, and not allow, you know, something as, you know, small as age define, you know, what I can and cannot do. Exactly. That's very, very important. A as you went through the session of the General Assembly, what uh, were one or two of your most meaningful experiences? Was mm. it so were mm. some of the people you met uh, yeah. most meaningful? Were some of the yeah. issues that were being debated? Uh, mm. What What did you come out with and say this? Yeah. I'll remember all of this, but these two I'll remember forever. Yeah. So there was there was one moment in particular uh, that you know I just remember walking away from and just being in in awe. I went to an education event that was hosted uh, by the Brookings Institute, mm -hmm. um, and so you know there's a lot of events that are happening at the UN, but also there's a lot of side events that are happening to kind of continue the discussion outside of the United Nations. So this was a side event. Um, and it was specific specifically focused on how we can empower girls through education. Um, and there was um, a woman there who had um, started a girls' school in India and specifically focused on the most underprivileged girls um, in her community. Um, but what I found to be the most uh, powerful moment of that talk was seeing a student who now was a teacher um, of the school talk about how she went from face facing just insurmountable uh, obstacles um, and now you know you know just that investment in one girl how that can you know lead to transforming communities and whole societies and so just seeing that full circle right from student mm -hmm. to teacher uh, to empowering a legion of, of, of young girls um, I thought that was the most powerful moment um, you know of being part of the UN General Assembly high-level week mm -hmm. Well, you're watching Global Connections Television, which is a privately funded, independently produced program. The opinions expressed on Global Connections are solely those of the moderator and his guest. We would invite our viewers to go to our website at www.globalconnectionstelevision.com to view previous programs. Also, if you're involved with any type of media outlet, be it a PBS or community access television station, or perhaps it's an educational institution that has an intra-campus television hookup, or you just have a website and you'd like to share our programs, please do so. Global Connections Television is provided free of charge as a public service to help us better understand international issues and how they impact our lives. Today we're taking a look at uh, youth involvement at the United Nations and what one youth observer had a very u unique experience doing at the UN. My guest today is Manira Khalif, and she is the 2017-2018 U.S. Youth Observer to the United Nations. Manira, we're talking about the mm -hmm. all of these unique experiences. Uh, how can other youth, mm -hmm. how can young people get more involved? They can obviously yeah. join UNA USA. Yeah, exactly. That's one thing they can go, do. Mm -hmm. But what else can they do yeah. to get involved, to really yeah. uh, be actively engaged? Yeah. So it was. Uh, 
I had this moment uh, during UN Day where this young young girl, I think she was around six eight six to you know eight years old, uh, comes up to the mic, um, and you know I was on a panel uh, talking about. Um, the work that I do with the United Nations. And so she asked, how can I get involved? And it was just the most adorable moment. Um, and you know, I'll repeat what I said to her, which was, we need to think globally, but act locally. Uh, mm -hmm. these, these goals are applicable to you know, every community and across the board, right? And so it's really about, you know, whether you're interested in climate change or women's empowerment, finding organizations within your own community and saying, how can I lend a hand, right? Um, and, and, you know, and I know um, just from my own personal experience that they would, you know, love to have young people who are passionate um, to get involved um, and, and, and get going on these various issues. So really, it's about thinking globally, but acting locally. Exactly. Yeah. Now you're involved not only in this, but a lot of other activities here <laughs> that are very, <laughs> and we'll try to just breeze through a few yeah. of them here. Give us a little update on this. Yeah. You're an advocate and teen advisor for the United Nations Foundation's Girl Up program. Yeah. Basically, what is the mission of Girl Up? Yeah, so I was involved with Girl Up um, in, uh, during high school, and Girl Up is a, is a campaign of the United Nations Foundation that works to mobilize American girls to empower their counterparts in developing countries mm -hmm. to be healthy, safe, educated, counted, and positioned to be leaders within their own community. Um, and so, uh, you know, in the time that I was a Girl Up teen advisor, I was able to attend uh, Malala Day, for example, the UN headquarters, where I was able to speak um, uh, at the UN and, and talk about the importance of educating uh, young girls um, and kind of the cycle of development that that sets forth. You know, I was able to lobby um, for uh, the Girls Count Act, for example, uh, which ensures that girls are registered at birth because when you actually don't have a birth certificate, there are so many obstacles that end up um, being placed in your way. Life mm -hmm. becomes much more difficult. You don't become a visible member. And for example, if, you know, uh, uh, nothing but net uh, tries to provide um, malaria nets, right? And they, they don't know that a family has a daughter, for example, because she's never been registered. They're not going to provide the right amount of nets. So it's really about making sure that girls are visible um, and counted. And so that's, you know, a few examples of the work that I was doing with, with Girl Up. And you mentioned Malala Day also. We're talking about mm -hmm. Malala Yousaf? Sai, yes, from yes. From Pakistan. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, first off, who is she and what, what was mm -hmm. the emphasis on Malala Day? So she's an incredible young woman um, uh, who I, I think has become, um, not, you know, an inspiration not only for myself but really across the globe. Mm -hmm. uh, so she was an education advocate um, in in Pakistan um, and then was targeted by the Taliban um, and you know unfortunately ended up uh, uh, you know uh, being attacked. Um, but you know she she kind of you know she used uh, that kind of that moment of, of tragedy uh, to continue to advocate for education um, and has really become uh, kind of the voice when it comes to when it comes to girls' education. Um, she leads the Malala Fund and attends mm -hmm. Oxford now. Um, but that was you know the first time that I was you know in her in her presence and was really inspired uh, by you know her voice and her courage. Um, Mm -hmm. She she is a, remar a remarkable person, and she yeah. had such an excruciating experience. Mm -hmm. But uh, she has certainly parlayed that into trying to be the face of a young person mm -hmm. who's making a difference for yeah. women, especially young women, exactly. around the world. And there, mm -hmm. there are many ways to do it. How do you view the Sustainable Development Goals and mm -hmm. Uh, what, when they focus uh, to empower women, which yeah. I think is one of the most important. Mm. Climate change and yeah. empowering women, in my opinion, <laughs> are two of the most important. Most important yeah. But how do you see the sustainable development goals as far as helping to achieve that? Yeah. So the sustainable development goals came about after the Millennium Devel Development Goals. Um, and it was really about uh, coming together, uh, the various members of the United Nations coming together and saying, you know, what, what issues do we need to focus on uh, to making um, a better world for all people? And so the way that I look at it is it's daring. Um, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a vision, right, of, of ensuring that no one really gets left behind. Um, and when it comes to um, I think there, you know, there are two things that kind of connect everything. One, I think, like you mentioned, uh, uh, women, women's empowerment, I think is, you know, kind of the link, right? A lot of these issues don't stand alone; they're interconnected. Um, and so, when you look at education, for example, uh, young girls face, you know, disproportionately face um, barriers to education that ties again back to gender equity. And so, I really think that empowering young people and, and women in particular will help to kind of set forth um, a cycle of development and we'll see a lot of these goals being fulfilled as a result of it. Mm -hmm. 
Now, another organization, you, you, I don't know how you have time to do other things. <laughs> You're involved in so many organizations. Uh -huh. But you are a co-founder of a non-governmental organization mm. called Lighting the Way. Mm. What is Lighting the Way? What's the main purpose of that particular yeah. operation? Yeah, so I co-founded Lighting the Way with my with my siblings. And, and you know, I had I'd heard from my mother the obstacles that, that young girls face in many parts of the world regarding getting an education. Um, you know, the, when I had heard the story, I had kind of almost at the time, I was taking for granted the fact that education was so accessible um, in, in, in the U.S. Um, and just hearing the fact that, that this wasn't a reality for many girls really kind of lit a fire under me and, and made me excited to take action on, on, the, on this issue. And so we started lighting the way uh, to make education more accessible in East Africa, particularly for young girls. And so you know, we do that by you know, providing teacher sponsorships, by providing scholarships, uh, building libraries. Um, and it's really about uh, making sure that, again, no one gets left behind. But also there's an East African proverb that says, if you educate a boy, you educate an individual. But if you educate a girl, you educate a nation. Mm -hmm. So we really believe that that's, you know, in terms of when we talk about development and, and making sure uh, that everyone has a better life and a better chance at, at, at fulfilling their dreams, it really starts with making sure that young girls have access to schooling and, and quality schooling in particular. Mm -hmm. That is so absolutely critical. Mm -hmm. it, it, not, you're right. It changes not only the, the person, but the family, the community, and the nation 100%. when women are educated. And it, it's extremely important to do that. What uh, would you like to do as, well, when you graduate from Harvard, mm -hmm. but also even sooner than mm -hmm. that, yeah. <laughs> let's just say at the end of this uh, yeah. next year, 2018, when yeah. you are no longer the youth observer for the mm -hmm. United States, and there'll be another one selected for next year. Yes. Mm -hmm. But what would you like to do to help build upon this foundation, mm -hmm. to help carry forward this message, yeah. to carry out these, uh, take these ideas out to the public, especially mm -hmm. to young people, and yeah. to, to get them more involved? Yeah, you know, a really big goal for me um, when I when I was um, selected for the Youth Observer role was uh, just instilling this idea of global citizenship. You know, we live in a world that is increasingly interconnected, and the world continues to feel smaller and smaller. Um, and and for many of us, we hold kind of uh, the world in the palm of our hands, right? Mm -hmm. And so this this sense of you know, we not only have to care about what's happening within our own country, but also outside of it, um, is really something that I want to kind of instill and foster in young Americans. Uh, because the fact of the matter is, we, we you know we cannot play isolationist. We have to engage with the world around us, and that's really how we go about creating not only a better world for ourselves, but also for the global community. Mm. As a young person, you see the problems we're confronting today. Mm. As I mentioned before, climate change and mm. empowering women are the two major yeah. ones. But climate change is wreaking havoc in many parts of the mm. world. But as a young person, someone who's involved yeah. in trying to deal with these problems, are you optimistic for the future? I think we have to be. Um, I think in order to create any sort of change, in order to get people excited to do something, we have to have a, a sense of optimism and hope. Um, I recently did an interview with um, global superstar Ellie Goulding, uh, and, and we were talking specifically about um, climate change and protecting the environment. And she, she, made, she made a point of saying that we need to have a sense of optimism. Because when we talk about climate change, there's this kind of sense of doom, right? And, and, there's the, and, you know, and I think that creates a sense of helplessness and makes people not want to act. And so I think optimism is really crucial. But I think also an understanding of the fact that you do have the power to create change, right? I think as, as consumers, right, as young people in particular, where we, where we you know, the brands that we, that we support, um, you know, the organizations that we back, making, sh making them, holding them accountable, right, to also making sure that they're, you know, sustainable and protecting the environment is our way of ensuring that, that we, you know, we live in a more, um, sustainable and prosperous um, world. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and I think you're absolutely right. You've got to hold the organizations accountable. They mm. need to be transparent. Mm. They need to be democratic. They need to involve people. Mm. They need to focus on these particular issues and to really to mobilize the resources to do it. And I just pay lip service to it. And I'm yeah. not talking about the UN, I'm talking mm. about everybody around yeah. the world, yeah. everybody as we get involved in these issues because mm. climate change is overwhelming. There is no one country or one region that's going to be able to defeat climate change. It yeah. is here, we can see the devastating effects in uh, virtually every country of the world. Yeah. I've yet to talk to anybody in any country that's had something positive to say <laughs> about climate change. <laughs> and so let me tell you, <laughs> it's not been good yeah, news. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. up to this point. But yeah. you're right, these, these problems are massive, mm. they are daunting, 
they're at times overwhelming, but still, if we mobilize young people, we mobilize all parts of the society mm -hmm. and bring them together to work on these problems, we can certainly do it. Yeah. And Manira Kahl, if you're certainly doing it as a U.S. Youth Observer here at the United Nations for thank 2017 so to 2018, but I want to thank mm -hmm. you so very much for a very interesting and a very informative program. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Thank you. I'm Bill Miller. Thank you for joining us today on Global Connections Television.